You guys are always asking me to make videos on how I do some of the animations and graphics in my explanatory videos. So today I'm gonna do just that. I'm gonna show you how to turn shapes and images into masks in Premiere Pro like this and like this quickly and easily so you can use it to add some cool effects to your videos. Let's get undone. Ahoy matey, I'm Gerald Undone, and let's get right into Premiere. So the first thing you need obviously is some footage. So I've got a couple video clips here. This first one is just from a previous video that I made. So should be lots of derp faces in there as we skip around. And then the second thing I've got is just some footage of, of some water and stuff like that. So uh, we'll drop that in here and we'll just work with this smaller portion so that we don't need to take up our entire timeline. And this will just be where we're where we're cooking. Let's say that we wanted to use this water or sky and put it into the previous video, but with a fun shape. Because if we were just doing a simple mask, you wouldn't need to follow any of this because you can just, you know, use your mask, come over here, use the pen tool if you want, you know, I don't know, draw a shape. And then there you go. Now you've got a mask and you can do whatever you want. But it's when you want to emulate a shape or an image or something like that, that you can't really use these tools. And before you guys fill up the comments, I know that there are other ways to do this with blend modes and with different keys, but there are limitations to those, which we'll touch on as well, involving transitions and dissolves that don't really work as well, as well as different blend modes on top of those blend modes because of the limitations in Premiere. But the method that I'm gonna show you, two ways of doing it, they don't have any of those limitations. So the first thing that you're gonna need is a transparent image. Now you can do this in anything, Photoshop, GIMP or any other free software, as long as you can create a file that has the shape or image that you want and a transparent background. That's what's key here. So I'm gonna get rid of this mask. Now what I like to do to make sure that the framing is correct is I'll take the layer here and I'll extract a frame from it. That way, when I pop that open in Photoshop, I'm already using the exact same frame as my video. So in this case, it's gonna be a 38, 40 by 2160. And it doesn't really matter even if we keep this layer or not, but if we wanted to say, pull something out of this or use a specific shape here, maybe in our video, we had our face and we wanted to cut out our face, well, we could do that. But instead, let's just make a new layer and delete this one, and then now we're all set up. Now, just for the sake of keeping it easy, I'm not gonna make anything crazy. I'll just use a Photoshop shape. And here, okay, we'll use this one. It's the do, do not enter or no sign, whatever. So we'll go with that. Now, it doesn't really matter so much what the color of the object is, as long as it's defined and separated from the background with the transparency. So let's just save this out like that, and we'll know how big it's gonna be, because again, we're using the same size frame because we exported the frame from Premiere Pro. So when we save this out, we wanna make sure that we save it as a PNG or some other form that keeps the transparency and we'll call this uh, don't. And now when we pop back into Premiere, so let's import that image and we'll pop it in on top here. And we'll expand that across. So now we have the shape that we wanna use as video layer three and then we have video layer two is this water and then video layer one, if we hide these other two as you can see, is the video of me making a silly face. Okay, so the first method I'm gonna show you is go to the effects and look for track mat key. And you're gonna to wanna to put that on the layer that has the video that you want the shape to resemble. So in this case, it's gonna be video two. And then when we come over here, you can see that on video two, we have the track mat key and you choose what layer you want the mat to come from, which is video three in this case, because that's the layer that has the shape on it. So you can see what happens. We have a do not enter sign that takes on the characteristics of the video underneath it. Now, if we use motion on the layers, it's gonna have a different result. If we use motion on the top layer, it's moving sort of what you see, so what part of the frame underneath that you see. But then if we use motion on the layer underneath, the one with the actual water, that's gonna just move the sign around without changing what portion of the water scene we're capturing. So we can just move that over here and, I don't know, resize it how we want. And then there you go, now you have I don't know why you would want this specific thing, but apply to anything. Any shape you want, a smiley face, you want a leaf, whatever, you can put it in there. And you can also use, the reason why I use this mode instead of different types of key, like an ultra key or whatever, is that you can also use, uh, it can blend out in a gradient and it doesn't cause weird lines. I'll show you how to do that right now. We'll, we'll keep with this do not enter sign. So if we go back into Photoshop and we take this shape and we go to filter and apply, let's say a Gaussian blur to it, we'll have to convert to a smart object. And if we add a 15 pixel blur, now we obviously have a gradient as it fades out. Now, if we save that out again, and uh, actually, a little trick in Premiere, if you click somewhere else and hit save, then you're allowed to copy over the file without it telling you that it's being used. So we'll just do that. And now as soon as we click back on the video, the symbol will be updated to the blurry one. And as we can see, if we zoom in a little bit, it is 
smoothed out with a gradient. So that can make it nicer than the hard line. And all the other principles still apply, you know, which layer you move. If you move the under layer, you're gonna move this thing around like that. One of the reasons why I use this method, like I was saying, is with blend modes. So let's say, for instance, that we wanted to have this thing, I don't know, random wipe in. That's a transition that I think is kind of fun. If we put the random wipe on, let's zoom in here. If we put the random wipe on the image layer, that's a do not enter sign, and we see what happens, see how weird this is? And then boom, all of a sudden it's fine. So during the transition, it's very peculiar. And then it's fine once it's done. Well, that's not the transition you want. And I believe that even something as simple as cross dissolve will produce a strange result as well. So let's say, yeah, see, and even if I move these things over, so let's move these, these layers over a little bit so that we still have some, some content going on all the time. And then we transition in this thing. Boom, it shows the full image and then shows the white thing. And then it's, it's just, this, it's an awful transition. So the way that you're gonna wanna work around that is to first nest the layers, but you still have to have the transition in it. And I'll show you why. If we nest these layers, like, so we choose, we choose the two layers here and then we nest them. Now, if we add a cross dissolve to the front of this, let's see what happens. Works fine, right? It fades in nicely and it's good to go. And I think the same will work for the random wipe, which is a bit trickier of a transition. We bring that in, yep, look, it still builds it perfectly. So that's how you can do that simply. But now when you add blend modes, it gets worse. And this is a reason why you have to do things in a certain way if you wanna really stack on all the effects. So if we take this nested sequence and we come over to the blend modes and maybe instead of just having it look like this with the water, let's do uh, linear light. So now we have a different look all together and we're like, oh yeah, I love that look for some reason on this do not enter sign, it's gotta look like that. But now look what happens when we execute that random wipe. So it'll start to wipe in, but it doesn't have the blend mode on. And then when the wipe finishes, then the blend mode just kicks in. So again, it's not smooth. And again, that's not what you want. And I think that it might be fine with cross dissolve for this one, but let's check. So yeah, with cross dissolve, it's fine. But the more complicated ones, like say if you were to use a gradient wipe, which I also like that one, it'll be the same thing as the random wipe. It'll gradient wipe in, but without the blend mode, and then boom, the blend mode just kicks in. And then, that's no good, it's jarring, right? So in order to fix this, we're gonna have to go back in the history before I nested the layers. So here we were, look at that face of me. What you're gonna wanna do first is put the transition on the correct layer before you nest them. Now, I'm gonna show you the difference here. So let's use the random wipe again. If we put the random wipe on the image layer, it, as we said, it, it's, it's this garbage, it's no good. Now instead, if we put the random wipe on the layer with the water, you get a much better result. Then you nest them, not the other way around. Don't nest them and then add a transition. So now the nested sequence, if we look into it, we can see it has the, the random wipe that builds into it and then there's nothing, it's just black. But over here on the regular sequence, now we can change the blend mode. So if we change it now to linear light and we look, it's doing the random wipe, but with the correct blend mode and there's no more jumpy thing. Now I've shown you shapes, but we can also do this with images. It doesn't have to be just white or, or just a flat color like that. As I showed you, it can have a gradient, which is great because that's better than keying. And it can also have textures and stuff like that. It doesn't need to only be a flat color. So let's get rid of this and I will bring in that water footage one more time and we'll zoom in on it again so we just see a bit of the water. Now I've got this fence image that uh, I'm just using because it's, I don't know, simple. And if we look at it, it looks like this. So it's a fence. I'll hide the other layers so you can see what it is. It's just a fence, but it has texture and uh, it's cut out. I just cut it out of a white background. So it doesn't matter though. The only part that matters is that it's on a transparent background. And so the exact same principles apply. You can resize it, of course. So we could, you know, bring it down smaller and then we could put it, I don't know. Now we've got this nature themed fence. Then we want to change our blend mode to, let's go with color dodge. And so now we got this funky fence that comes up like that and we can see the water kind of rolling into the bottom and it's all purple and it's wild like that. Anyway, I think that's all you really need to know about that. The rest, like I said, is gonna be up to your imagination. The purpose that I use this for a lot and the reason why I'm recommending it is I use it for picture in picture stuff and sometimes the text effects. So if I want to say, you know, here's a previous video or or here's like, you know, here's how you in, a lens goes into this thing or like when I talk about optics sometimes, I'll put like a graphic up on the screen but if I wanna show another video inside of that, or if I wanted to take up a portion of the screen that isn't easily done with just by drawing a mask, cause that can be kind of tedious. You know, you put all these different points and you have to move it as it goes. Anybody that's ever done complex masking at Prima Pro knows that it's tedious. Ahoy matey, I'm Gerald Undone. Ahoy matey. <laughs> Ahoy matey. <laughs> I can't even say it with a straight. Okay. Ahoy matey. <laughs>
But that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this video helpful or at least entertaining. And if you did, make sure you leave it the old thumbs up and consider subscribing if you haven't already. But if you did not find this video helpful or entertaining, feel free to hit the dislike button twice. Now, all right, I'm done. <laughs>